October is here, and you know what that means? It's spooky season. I love horror movies. Always have, always will. Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, Halloween, you name it, and I'm game. Now, horror games, on the other hand, I'm a bit iffy with. I don't have a wealth of experience with them, and I thought that this October I would change that. So I'm planning on playing at least two games from the genre this month, and since I love horror movies, I thought what better place to start with than Saw, the video game. Saw has always been a movie series that entertained me, whether it be the first film's shocking conclusion or the brutal gore fest that followed it. But I wanted to find out one thing going into this video. Did the movie successfully translate into a game? Let's find out. This is Saw the Video Game. Live or die. Make your choice. Saw released October 6, 2009 for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, later releasing on PC October 22, 2009. For the sake of consistency with the sequel, I played the game on PS3. Now, before I get into the story, I do want to mention that this game directly ties into the events of the first film. If you have not seen that movie and you're sensitive to light spoilers, please skip ahead to the time you see on your screen. If you're not sensitive to spoilers, then I'm going to briefly explain the first film and how it ties into the game. Alright, so in the films, the Jigsaw Killer grabs troubled souls off the streets and puts them through horrific trauma to overcome their vices. These vices could be drug addiction, prostitution, murder, or maybe people that Jigsaw thinks just got off too easy. He's a dying man who doesn't have much time left, so his elaborate traps are a way to make his victims appreciate the life that they have. In the first film, a detective named David Tapp and his partner Steven Singh are working on tracking down Jigsaw. Long story short, Tapp's obsession with Jigsaw gets Singh inadvertently killed, as well as his expulsion from the police force. His obsession with Jigsaw doesn't end with the job though, and he continues to track him day and night. Tapp had been staking out the apartment of someone who he thought was Jigsaw, but instead that man was actually a victim of Jigsaw. When Tapp spots gunshots in the apartment, he quickly rushes over to confront the attacker. The problem is, Tap is overpowered by this man, who isn't Jigsaw, by the way, but just another one of his victims that has to play Jigsaw's game, and Tap accidentally shoots himself in the tussle over the gun. Now, for the rest of the film, we don't see Tap or get any updates on his condition. He's presumed dead at this point. Later on in the sequels, it's confirmed that he did, in fact, die that day. Now, this is where the game deviates from the movie storyline drastically. So, in the game, we're playing as Detective Tap, but we wake up in an abandoned asylum. Jigsaw has removed the bullet from Tap's body and saved his life, but has placed him here as a way to get him to let go of his obsessive behavior towards Jigsaw. And so throughout your time with Saw, you're tasked with making it to the end of Jigsaw's game. I really love the way this played out. Much like the Scarface game, I much prefer when movie games either expand upon a universe or in Saul's case, change a pivotal moment in a character's story and instead it gives them an alternate ending. Do you kind of understand what I'm coming from with that? I've already seen the movie, so I want to experience something more or something new inside of that universe. Moving along, the video game Tap doesn't really look or sound like the movie Tap, and he doesn't even have the same scar on his neck from the film. Uh, thankfully though, Tobin Bell does return as Jigsaw, and he's as creepy as ever. His voice is deep, raspy, and menacing. I cannot imagine anyone else playing a Jigsaw killer, and I'm glad I don't have to. Many other characters from later films either make an appearance or are mentioned mentioned in case files you find scattered throughout the level. Your primary goal in Saw is to end Jigsaw's game, and you'll be solving puzzles not only to progress through locked doors and such, but also to save various people that tap his connection to. Examples being Oswald McGillicuddy, who was a journalist who led a smear campaign against Tap after Singh's death, or even Melissa Singh, Stephen Singh's widow, who blames Tap for her husband's demise. These puzzles might have you digging through a toilet full of syringes to find a key, or spinning pipes around on a dial to complete a pathway through them. There are more complex puzzles, of course, and I like the ones that occurred during rescues. Take, for example, Melissa Sings here. It's a slide puzzle where you have to slide the block across the spiral square. You're able to slide across the X's, but each one of these inches Melissa closer to death. Six X's total per board, and she's gone. So you have to be careful about how and where you slide the block. I like to think of these rescues as sort of like boss fights in a way. They're more complex puzzles than what you find throughout the game, and they either have multiple segments to them, are timed, or both. I actually 
actually really liked the puzzles for the most part, but I did find them to be a bit tedious as time went on. Once you've stuck your arm in a toilet a few times, the shock factor sort of wears thin and it gets tedious. You'll be solving the same five or six puzzles over and over as you progress through the story, only being broken up by the previously mentioned rescues and combat. Combat is really where Saw the video game falls off and I'd like to explain that. The combat in Saw is slow, clunky, and unresponsive. You have a variety of melee weapons to use on enemies like baseball bats and crutches as well as firearms and traps. Firearms will one-shot every enemy except for the brutes, and each weapon has five rounds to a mag. Firearms are pretty rare early on, but as you progress, they are frequently given to you and ruin any sort of survival aspect this game might have had. Traps are probably the most interesting part of Saw the video game. Not only are there environmental traps, there are also traps that you can craft from items you find around the world. So, environmental traps can be trip wires attached to shotguns or fuse boxes attached to puddles of water, electrifying them if you place a fuse in the box. I never died in the electrified water, but the shotgun trip wires killed me so many times and scared the shit out of me when it happened too. They were pretty difficult to see on the PS3 with the aliasing and draw distance, but that sort of enhanced the danger. You had to be really slow and methodical in certain sections of the game. With that said, however, if you're being chased by an enemy, you can simply turn around and arm a trap very quickly and the enemy will still run into it. Cheesing enemies like this is essential to your survival, even later on in the game against the final boss, which is a combat section by the way. I found that by placing an explosive trap here, I was able to take away most of their health and then I could just stun lock them with light punches. It was the only combat focused boss fight in the game and it honestly had me face palming with how poorly designed it was. And speaking on that poor design a bit, the melee weapon combat was abysmal. The game explains that you're able to swing a light attack and a heavy attack as well as a block depending on which face button you use. I almost never attacked an enemy outside of the counter mechanic just because enemies can stun lock you and make it impossible to strike before they do. I found it much easier to just counter the enemy with a well-timed block and then combat essentially boils down to a three or four button QTE. It'll break your weapon every time you do this but you also won't have to deal with the combat and it'll allow you to progress to the good parts of the game again like the puzzles. That's why I sort of like to describe the Saw video game as a third person puzzle game as opposed to survival horror. Some people are going to call it a survival horror or compare it to Silent Hill because of its publisher Konami but I don't think that's really fair. I never felt like the game was a survival game. I had plenty of healing items, weapons, and ammo for combat. And like I said, combat essentially boiled down to a QTE puzzle anyway, so for me, the game is purely a puzzle game. That's not to say it's bad as a whole, but to call this a survival horror game is misleading, and to me, it's a stretch. It's a shame, too, because I think Konami may have had something here with this game. It looks and sounds like a Saw movie, but they cut corners, and it's obvious. Take, for example, the reverse bear trap. It's this gnarly device that, if not removed in time, it snaps open and rips your jaw apart. This should be gruesome to look at and is in the movies. It makes me cringe every time, but instead in the Saw game, it's very tame by comparison and it just exposes the top of their skull. And come to think of it, I don't think I physically cringed once playing this game, whereas the films make me queasy all the time. My biggest issue though with Saw isn't the AI, it isn't the lack of gore or the combat system. No, 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 no. It's purely one section that happens about 80% of the way through the game. In this section, you're tasked with completing two circuit puzzles and exiting the room before bombs go off and kill you. Well, that sounds pretty simple, right? Well, there's this brute here that's locked in this cage that's blocking your path. If you choose to kill him, Jigsaw will take time off of your clock. If you choose to avoid him, you have to navigate through a hallway with these large metal blades that will kill you if you misjudge your step. On top of this, you need very specific items to complete these puzzles. These are found in the lockers thrown throughout the level. Complicating things even further, the circuit puzzle on this right side of the map has you solving an optional gas pipe puzzle and another smaller circuit puzzle to open a door to the larger circuit circuit puzzle. If it sounds like a pain in the ass, it's because it is. And oh yeah, no checkpoints. So if you die, you have to restart this entire section from scratch. And the thing is, the puzzles change with every single reload. So you're not truly making any progress with each playthrough because nothing you've learned from your previous attempts will help you solve the circuit puzzles. I don't know how many times I had to redo this for the video. I struggled so hard to complete this. I think if I played this back in the day, or if I was playing this for my own enjoyment, I would have put it down. Down right here. I don't get mad at video games very often anymore, but this one had me pissed off. I can't tell you how many times I either forgot an item or got crushed by a blade trying to rush or just couldn't figure out one of the circuit puzzles. And the thing is too, there are no other ball bustingly difficult sections in the game, either before this or after it, so it seems a bit bizarre to me. It wasn't the final level, the final puzzle, or anything special. I can sit here all day and talk about my experience with Saw the video game, but I'm gonna leave it at that. At the beginning of the video, 
video, I wanted to find out if the movies were successfully translated into a game. Well, were they? I'm gonna say I'm mixed on that. The setting, Jigsaw's voice acting, the frequent appearances by Billy and other characters from the movies, the puzzles. I enjoyed that aspect of the Saw game. However, the clunky combat, the abysmal enemy AI, the lack of Tap's voice and appearance, it's too much for me to ignore. With all of this said, I would only recommend the Saw game to the most diehard fans of the franchise. It's obvious that Konami cut corners here and it shows in various aspects of the game. After completing Saw, I decided to do what any sane person does after beating a game they didn't like. I played the sequel. Yeah, so Saw received a sequel just one year later on October 19th, 2010 called Saw 2 Flesh and Blood that was released on PS3 and Xbox 360. I like to give sequels a chance sometimes, especially when it comes to video games. It gives the developers a chance to look back at what they could have improved on, what could have been changed, etc. The problem with Saw 2 is that the developers made almost everything worse in one way or another. I want to keep this brief, so I'm going to just quickly run down the list of things I felt were made worse by this sequel. Starting with the story, we play as Michael Tapp, who is Detective David Tapp's son. Michael is an aspiring journalist who up until this point has failed to secure a steady job. David, as evidenced by his antics in the previous game, is obsessed with catching the Jigsaw Killer and wasn't really in Michael's life growing up. Michael uses his father's connection to Jigsaw to get information out of him, ultimately stealing files from his apartment and betraying his father's trust. His father ultimately loses his life, and so Michael is visiting his apartment with the police after his death. Michael walks outside to smoke a cigarette where he's stabbed with a syringe and is taken away to play Jigsaw's game. So throughout the game, you're working your way through Jigsaw's game, solving puzzles and fighting enemies, just like the first one. The story in this one didn't really click with me. There are too many made up characters for the game universe versus the film universe. And and the connection between the two is even weaker than it is in the first game as a result. Tobin Bell returns to voice Jigsaw, which is one of the few bright spots to this game, but everyone else is just abysmally bad once again. It's hard to be immersed in a game world when everyone sounds like they were hired off of Fiverr. Moving along to the puzzles, there was about the same amount of variety of them as there was in the first, but they got old again really quickly. There's enough variety for the first hour or two, but you'll regularly be playing the same five or six looking puzzles for the remaining three to four hours of the game. For me though, the biggest drop off in quality comes to combat. Now, the first game didn't have the best combat, like I said, I'm the first one to admit that, but you had traps, you had crafting of items, firearms, well, Saw 2 has none of that. Your only option this time around is melee weapons, and there's no light or heavy attacks, it's just a QTE. Yeah, it, it basically boils down to waiting for an enemy to run at you, you wait for the button to pop up on your screen, then you hit said button on the controller, then you press three consecutive buttons when it tells you to, and that's it. They've completely removed any sort of strategy or survival aspect. They've tried to spice up some of the combat sequences, maybe try to make them a little more strategic with this spite guy that rushes at you blindly, where you have to lead him into an elevator shaft or get him to run into an electrified surface, but again, this happens way too often and it becomes repetitive very quickly. There's also a new mechanic where an enemy will shoot at you and you have to hide while they reload their gun. I enjoyed this the first time. It was a breath of fresh air, but then they repeated it a further or four or five times and it became a suffocating experience. That sort of encapsulates my entire experience with Saw 2 Flesh and Blood. It was a monotonous, soulless slog. A game that made me appreciate the first one so much more than I did while playing it. I know I didn't talk about Saw 2 very much, but there really isn't much else to say. It's a bland cash grab put out by Konami to help promote Saw 3D, which released just 10 days later here in the States. I've talked about this in the past, but I really hate these tie-in games that serve no purpose other than to promote a film. I want a unique feature or a game that immerses me in that movie universe, but Saw 2 failed in every regard. I don't know who's to blame, whether it's Konami themselves or the developers Zombie Studios, but what I do know is that both Saw and its sequel Saw 2 are poor examples of tie-in games. I think they could have done a much better job, but they were too busy trying to tie the games into the release of the films. I'm a huge fan of the films, especially the first three, so I was really stoked to play these when I read that they took place chronologically where they did. After playing them though, I felt relieved that they were finally over. That's never a good sign with any piece of media and I cannot in good faith recommend either of these games. Stay away from them.
Thank you all so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to recommend my Nightmare of Decay video, which was a much better survival horror experience from a solo dev, no less. I'm also going to recommend my Manhunt 2 video, which is another sequel that dropped off in quality from its original game. As always, have a good one.